All right, so I think we're live. Oh, wow. It's very cool. <laughs> right, let's see if I can uh, discover a link on here. Yes. Yeah, it's been a while since we have done uh, a live stream, Hilbert. <laughs> It really has. So uh, apologies for the delays, guys. I know I said it'd be, you know, commencing exactly 18 minutes ago now, but, you know, we're here. Yeah, we're here and alive and well. So hey, I actually, I have found the live stream link on YouTube. All right, splendid. So I can send it to my media yeah. uh, uh, outlets and, uh, you know, so we can get my fans in, get your fans in and... Uh, Absolutely. So uh, in a few minutes' time, we'll start talking about the actual history, so there won't be too much waffle to begin with. Yeah, apologies. <clears throat> All right. All right, let's see what's happening in the chat. Cool, Helmus uh, von Nassau, very good. <laughs> right. Um, oh, th uh, thank you, Hilbert. No problem. Uh, right, so I'm going to say live now. Um Let's send it on Twitter, go and send it on that site, and send it to uh, that one, that one. Um, okay, hang on, let me, uh, uh, hang on. That's for the delay. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys uh, don't know what we're planning to talk about, this live stream is mostly sort of old English, a bit about the Anglo-Saxons. And then as well, actually, thanks to a meme that I posted on, on the Facebook group and on Twitter as well, which caused quite a lot of um, conversations to go on about it, about the connection with old English and old Norse and whether the two were mutually intelligible or not. And, you know, in a wider context, the Anglo-Saxons and the interaction with the Vikings and the Danes, the Norwegians, those kinds of people, as well as some more general things about English um, and also a request to talk a bit about the Norman impact on English and a bit a bit um, around there so that's what we're going to be talking about so I hope you guys are going to enjoy this live stream I'm sure you will yes a lot of jam-packed information I would say I hope so <laughs> um, I, I do take it that this live stream is now public on your channel like yeah absolutely unlisted. yeah yeah the chat oh, okay. uh, full of people talking already um, so that's good Wait, hang on. I need to check. Uh, I need to go to the link myself because I'm not seeing this chat. <laughs> hang, on. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Okay. All right. Let me get, let me, okay. Oh, wow. Yes. We. Oh, my. We do have some people in here. Oh, man. Okay. Wow. Oh, wow. It's a whole crowd of people already. A lot of people already, um, someone talking about Nader Soxies. I've actually been listening to quite a lot of Heidefolk lately, so they sing a few songs in uh, the, the kind of the Dutch Saxon language, Nader Soxies, which is really cool. Mm. <laughs> oh, hello, Sarah. <laughs> She's a, a very loyal subscriber, and uh, Angus Wu, he's, a, he, he's another subscriber of mine. So m my audience is slowly coming in. Yeah, same with yeah. mine. We'll we'll give it one or two minutes, guys, just so everyone can see the notification, and then we'll get right ahead with talking about the uh, history and languages and stuff. Yes, and all the good stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's been a while, Albert. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, I've known Hilbert before. He was history with Hilbert. I mean, uh, the days of your yeah, the days of your yeah, yeah, yeah dahum. <laughs> <laughs> or that's one pronunciation, but yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, no, it's uh, actually yeah, I, I got to know Kevin through his channel. So if you guys don't know, it's uh, Learn in the Ald English, and I think I got the pronunciation there right. Yeah, learn the old English. Uh, I mean, well, the pronunciation of old English can be a bit, a little, a, li a little open ended because mm. it is a historical mm. language, right? I mean, well, anyway, well, let's uh, save it for the further live stream. Right? True. I mean, 
yeah, I don't want to spoil too much uh, stuff now, right? I mean, it's only, what, the first few minutes already? Uh, uh, yeah, I think we've been uh, going for a few minutes now. Oh, my God, 120 people watching now. Jeez. Yeah, I reckon when we get to about, like, 140, 150, that's when we'll start. I reckon that'll be about the amount. Mm, damn. Are, already 26 likes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> popular lad you are a lot of germans in the chat as well that's pretty yeah. cool 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 they, they they would enjoy this actually yeah so, uh, old english is um very like as a structure of a language the structure of the of old english is very much like german mm. it's got the case system as well which is i think yeah. the case system still around in german right yeah, yeah. I mean, the, well, the difference is, is that uh, German has four cases, um, mm. whereas English, uh, old English, has five. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool. Um, mm. That goes to show how much German hasn't hasn't changed over fifteen fifteen hundred years. So. Yeah, it's interesting as well. I was um, reading about how German and specifically Lodem and so Pladduch, how that has influenced the some of the Scandinavian languages. So uh, yeah, Swedish, yeah. for example, with the Hansa, quite a few people talking in the chat about that and how yeah. uh, through trade that has uh, influenced the other languages there, yeah. which is quite it's, interesting. It's also been said that how uh, well Pladduch, or I like to call modern Saxon, uh, has influenced uh, uh, Danish to some degree. You know? mm. I mean. Uh, maybe that might explain why Danish is a bit, a bit guttural. Mm. Well, Danish is always um, described as the one where you have a potato stuck in your throat to be able to speak it. Yes, uh, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've I've heard that too, and uh, very different from uh, Norwegian mm. per se. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, okay. Well. 126, I mean, 127, okay. Yeah, I reckon, um, I reckon it'll be around this. It might increase as the live stream goes on. Who knows? Okay, well, let's, uh, I hope it doesn't take too, too long before it gets to uh, the, uh, you know, the amount, because... Oh, well, was... I mean, we might as well get underway, to be honest, because uh, people all come in and they can always skip, uh, go back to the start and watch from there, I guess. That's right. What well, is going? To, it is like a video, right? I mean, essentially, like after. This, yeah. So. Like people can always come in and, and watch it after it's happened. I guess if they're you know living down under or somewhere where it's you know four in the morning or something. Yeah, precisely. All right. Okay. Let, um. Let's uh, get this started, eh? Yeah. All right. So, um, I don't know. What do you want to begin talking about, Kevin? Do you think you want to? go into the Old English and Old Norse kind of thing first, because I think that was quite relevant last week with uh, all the discussions about the whether they were mutually intelligible or not. Yes, uh, I would like to go over that. Yes, Old Norse and Old uh, old English and Old Norse, uh, mutual intelligibility. My definitive answer, I mean, I've actually thought about this hard last night, um, whether, uh, you know, um, how well the, these two, uh, the Norsemen and the well Danes, uh, particularly, and the and the people that they encountered were specifically the Angles. Uh, what, what, how how well they would have understood each other, um, and how uh, in intelligible, uh, mutually intelligible mm -hmm. these languages are. Well, um, we, we gotta go back a bit. What the Danes spoke was Old East Norse, and Old East Norse is, is what was mm -hmm. what evolved into um, what we know now as uh, Danish and, and Swedish. Mm. Um, but uh, that's something to bear in mind, whereas Norwegian, uh, sorry, uh, um, you know. Yeah, I think the, Norwegian, the, Icelandic, and Faroese were from Old West rather than Old East, right? So that's that why is, they're kind of in one group, um, that, as opposed to Swedish and Danish being more, you know, from the other dialect of Old Norse, if you will. Yeah. Yes, that, that is absolutely uh, correct. Uh, and then there are some Scandinavian languages that are kind of like in, somewhat in the weird between like Elf Dali and mm -hmm. so, which, which is another yeah. one. Um, 
it's me, interesting though because you you do have obviously that one side came from the one branch of old norse so like norwegian icelandic and faroese from old west yeah. with um danish and swedish from old east but you really find that danish uh, norwegian and swedish are more alike than um say the island so you have a, a distinction between mainland scandinavian languages and then the insular scandinavian languages so icelandic and faroese are more conservative generally speaking um with the language so you'll find that even though you have this distinction between sort of old east and old west norse and the languages that came after that really the bigger distinction between these languages the north germanic languages is which ones are spoken on the islands and then which ones are spoken on the mainland mm -hmm. yeah yeah i would imagine that there would be, be many differences uh uh dialectal differences even within um insular and main uh yeah insular and mainland the uh, scandinavian languages uh, mm. there's no doubt about that i mean uh i mean uh, like in my video what why, why does old english uh, sound like danish i mean I, i've been having some interesting comments there where where um you know i mean there are some people i guess in remote areas speak an old form of danish or something like that i mean mm. uh I mean, uh, I'm I'm assuming that these people are telling the truth. You know, I mean, who knows? I mean, maybe no. I shouldn't say that. I mean, it could be more like, but depending on how old that, that kind of Danish is, I don't know. I mean, you know, it, it could be something from like the 17th century, or it could be something from yeah, uh, ancient times. Who knows? But um, anyway. anyway, should we like move this on to kind of? So that's a bit of an yeah. in introduction of Old Norse. So it's like pretty much there is distinction between Old Norse. It's not like one. Yeah, you know, it, language so to speak. Well, there are you know dialectual. That, that is um a good point. That's a good point to make. Because thing is, the the uh, the uh, misconception or a preconception that a lot of people have when it comes to old languages that uh, people think that there's only one kind of old English, one kind of old High German, one kind of old Saxon, one kind of old Frisian, and one kind of old Norse, which is. Uh, which is very uh, misleading because um, in reality there, there are different dialects, different regions and whatnot, even with even within older languages. Mm. Um, so moving into uh, the old English and uh, old English and old Norse, well, we got to think about what kind of old English are we talking about here? What what was the kind of old English that the uh, Danes encountered? Mm. Well, the the Danes encountered the people called the Angles, and um, in England uh, there are two angling dialects and those are uh, northumbrian which is well in the north and then you have uh, mercian which is in central midlands uh, of england it looks like we have a big mercian fan in the chat as well at the moment oh well i think i see that <laughs> <laughs> i've got to say well, northumbrian's got to be the best one though but you know i'm biased well i mean uh, it's well it's angle i have no problem with it as long as it's <laughs> angle it's all good <laughs> right so um the thing is, uh, linguistically speaking, uh, whether these people would have understood each other, uh, my, my, definitive, my definitive answer, uh, are these languages uh, uh, intelligible? I'd say very slightly, very little, actually. Um, really? Be very, yeah, yeah. It'd be, it'd be very naive to think that um, they would get along just well, like understand each other, like how people, you know, people from America understanding people from the UK uh mm. it's not like that uh i i, I would say um because you could argue because sort of if you look at the time sense between um old norse and old english so really the anglo-saxon migrations um and it's thought really that the people who came over before were the the same peoples who later invaded obviously some of them having stayed behind in uh, Angeln and in Denmark in these regions. So that really the people who later split into Old English and Old Norse were at one point speaking the same language. Yes, Probably yes. still around you know, 200, 300 AD that that was still the same language, possibly with dialectual differences. But then that obviously around 450, that's when you get the Anglo-Saxon migrations into um, Great Britain with the, the various groups of the Angles um, and the Jutes from Denmark, uh, the Saxons from what's now northern Germany, and then obviously um, possibly Frisians as well. Although really these are all from a similar, probably the same Germanic group that have later moved into different areas and the different dialects moving into more languages. But then that 
really when they moved in in around 450. It was only around 300 years later that, well, a little bit longer than 300 years later, that they then would have encountered the people who had been speaking exactly the same language as they had been on the continent. And if you think about it, well, 350 years ago from now, that's when the colonies in America were happening. And that's when, you know, when we can still clearly understand. And I think it's it's true where you say that there is definite difference between the the situation then and the situation now with like mass media and communication but well, it is interesting to put it in the time scale like that yes uh, well yeah thing is um well i mean back then languages were more i don't know like they're more ma- malleable in a way that the, they evolve more likely whereas like you know the comparison between american and and uh, british english is that you know it's because you know of radio internet uh you know, uh, you know, the well, I was going to say the printing press, but uh, <laughs> but uh, well, that as well to a certain extent. Yeah, yeah because that that reinforces uh, language rules, if you will, like the spelling mm. and, and and ways pronunciation as well. And and um, whereas uh, you know, long before that, I mean, I mean, you, you only really the the scribes and the monks wrote things down in the Latin alphabet. Yeah. Well, occasionally with Eth and Thorn, you know, these are. Uh, runic origin uh, letters mm-hmm. um, and uh, what else uh, I was going to say well um, I don't know why would you what's your kind of main reason for thinking that they would have had a lot of trouble understanding each other like why do you think that old English and old Norse were you know mutually unintelligible to one another when you know if say um, an Anglo-Saxon in travels to York in 865 and he turns around the street corner and there you are there is a huge Danish who's call um, are they going to be able to talk so like why do you think they wouldn't be able to understand one well, another well I think there would be uh, a, a misunderstandings because well I mean initially there might be some understanding like, like a simple hello or like because you know the say I mean I mean it's similar in regards to like uh uh, like to say hello and whatnot, like be hail or be like West mm. Hall in Old English. And um, I mean, like stuff like that would be kind of okay. Like uh, it'll take a few seconds for the Anglo Saxon to realize, okay, you know what? I, mm. I understand the like, gist of what he's trying to say, but like stuff like uh, God die and God dagger, you know, that's quite easy to understand, really. Yeah, like you can kind of make out, okay, this means that. Mm. Um, it's, then you go further if you want to say like your like my name is you know like itch hata or you know or um the more like ek haiti in in yeah. you know old norse yeah but thing is um the thing is about that um but like ek haiti that, that 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 is actually um old west norse mm. whereas the old east norse is um well the verb the infinitive of the of the verb is ekaita so like it's h ash i t a mm. And um, so, uh, so I mean, to some degree, there would be some mm-hmm. understanding. But where they would really differ is really when, 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 mm-hmm. when you get to the um, uh, what's it called, the uh, the de- uh, demonstrative uh, pronouns. And what mm-hmm. I mean by that, these are like words like the and this. Uh, these happen at the end of uh, like they work like a suffix at the yeah. end of a word. Whereas, so, yeah. So to to give an example of that, sorry to cut in there just so that people you know understand what we're on about it's like in old norse if you have a horse um a horse would be in hester but if you then um the way it works with um the cases and things like that is that you can essentially plug that in at the end of the word so that you'd have um in hester and that's the way it works in old english if i'm not mistaken that well, you put it before but then in old norse you could also have hester in so you can put it at the end rather than before it as a separate word yeah, yeah. The, 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 in old English, it, it's uh, that you have the 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 article, and it becomes before the noun. Like it's never like in the at the end of the actual noun itself. I mean, that's mm. uh, that, that's really foreign to uh to to an Anglo-Saxon. I mean, uh, as uh, I mean, as far as uh, as well as the vocabulary, as far as like personal pronouns, like he, she, uh, it, and all that. Um, like to an Anglo-Saxon, the word for he is the he, but to um, but for for a, a Norseman, it's han. If I'm correct, hang on, let me let me double check that. Uh, I don't know. Is that so different? Because to be honest, it's like 
Well, there's there's a bit of a debate, but really it, the kind of consensus is that Dutch and German are very close. So if you speak one, then you're likely to understand a lot of the other. So like if you say in, in Dutch, like I'm called Hilbert, it would be ich heet Hilbert, whereas in German it's ich heiße Hilbert. And like even though they don't sound really similar, like it's obvious to me that ich heiße, oh, that sounds an awful lot like ich heet, you know? Um, mm. But then even the Old mm. Norse and Old English to me seem closer than even those two. Yeah, but this will give you some more comparison. I mean, like for like, I mean, the he in um, um, Old Norse is Han, uh, old uh, the feminine is Hon, uh, and and the neuter is as as uh, that. Mm. Okay, the, the, there is some similarity there because in Old English that would be um, it would be he heo, or depending on the dialect he or 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 that or that. You know, mm. so I mean, slight. There's a slight. Uh, I mean similarity there, but um, but the, but the different thing is um, there would be some misunderstand. Well, then, well, if you go if you go further, uh, uh, oh geez, um, yeah, I mean, uh, like if you like, his thing is in old English, there's no um, there's no like starting V sound. Well, mm -hmm. well, actually, if you, well, maybe to a West Saxon. Uh, yeah, there is, but like, but for like an angle, I mean, there, like, I mean, uh, it, you have an F, but like, it's, it, but it's pronounced as an F, whereas mm. other places it's like a V. Whereas in Old Norse, you know, you have words that actually start with a V. You know, like uh, they say we, it's like ver, mm. um, uh, or like the genitive uh, plural, first person. Uh, they say um, ours, I think it would be var. Mm. Um, and there are some other really weird words like um, that I, that would really throw off an Anglo-Saxon, like okar, uh, okar, um, ukar, ukar. Mm. You know, I it's mean, like, there's certainly you know. some things that are you know really markedly different um, in Old yeah. Norse. So I think in Old English, the the word for law was something like um, domu or something like that. It's they, uh, they took it from dom. Latin, I think. Whereas in Old Norse, it's lager. So that's where we get law from. So those two are really different. Well, I but, mean, we, you know, for a basic conversation, I think you know it would be it would be fairly similar, I'd imagine. Yeah, but the word law uh, in Old English is law, and, and that that that, that uh, fr uh, fricative uh, voice fricative G velar fricative G became mm. a, a W. So it's a uh, uh, and hang on, let me let me just uh, double check that, and I'll like. Uh, yeah. Law. yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah, of course, we have we hear about the, the Dane law or the or Dena law. Um, mm. but um, hang on, it says uh, from look okay, old English from old Norse, uh, log, an early plural form of log. Okay, mm. yeah, um, I think so. I think I, I read that the modern English law does come from old Norse. As oh, yeah? rather than old english yeah so that's one mm. instance where you'd be right in saying that you know you're not gonna get lager for you know or you're not gonna get domo from um or domer from lager yeah yeah i mean uh the word dome yeah then, yeah like the, the, the anglo-saxons that was like their word for like for law and all that hang mm. let me look at the etymology for that oh that is actually from proto uh germanic domas oh, okay yeah yeah oh cool I think that's also where probably doom comes from. So maybe uh, doom yeah. is you know when you you know what what's going to happen. Um, yeah. And I, I think it's probably a similar route to like Spanish, where you have the like rights and things being derecha, um, yeah, rather um, than law, which is kind of more yeah Norse, I guess. Yeah. Well, just to give some comparison with the word doom, um, in Old Frisian it's doom, mm. Old Saxon doom, in Old High German doom, uh, and uh, well. Uh, uh, old Norse Dormer, mm. and then in the Gothic it's Dorms. Yeah, yeah. So this gives some comparison. But as far as um, vocabulary, like like words and stuff like that. Um, the thing is, what, what what I found out about Old Norse, which well, I found pretty interesting, is that it retains the Proto-Germanic Au, mm. like A A U, and um, the Au um, in old that in, in Old English evolved into into into. Uh, E with a macron and a, mm. so I mean, for example, the word bean, as in like uh, uh, you know the food, uh, be beans, yeah. you know, a bean. And old English, uh, sorry, in old Norse, it's bown, but in old English, um, 
I guess I, I mean, I'm speculating here. A West Saxon pronunciation would be like a ban, mm. or um, Anglian would be um, would be a, a ban. Mm. So ban. Well, yeah, you can yeah. see that back in like the etymology for trees as well, because in German you obviously have Baum, which is tree, and then yeah. in Dutch you have Baum. Whereas yeah. in Frisian it's still Baum, so you still have the you know you can see that distinction. Yeah, uh, I think I think what happened there is that the uh, uh, that in Old Frisian, I think the uh, Proto-Germanic "ow" became "e," it became it became "a," I think. Uh, but in, in Old um, High German, uh, the Germanic uh, Proto-Germanic "ow" became "o." That's mm. why we, in um, uh, today we have uh, in, well, the word for Easter in German is "Ostern." So, whereas in English we have "Easter," "e a." So, so because because the Proto-Germanic origin of that is Austral. Mm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, if for those of you listening, I mean, to really understand Germanic languages, you have to uh, look into the um, phonology of um, these languages and uh, and uh, become familiar with Proto-Germanic. Because uh, what Proto-Germanic is, in a nutshell, is all, like um, it's a comparison of all the old Germanic languages, you know, stemming from a singular source. Uh, mm -hmm. Just as Hilbert was talking about earlier, how um, the North Germanic peoples and West Germanic peoples, at one time, they did speak one language, um, which was, I believe, a proto... Sorry, no, um, old... No, wait, no it's like proto-Northwest uh, uh, Germanic, and that goes further back to uh, proto-Germanic. So, but with all the Germanic languages, old Germanic languages together. But anyway, um, moving on though, I mean, uh, as another example um, uh, with uh, as a word, word we can compare in uh, Old Norse and Old English is like uh, the word the word for door. I mean, is a uh, I don't know. I mean, the, as far as uh, Old Norse pronunciation, I mean, one grammar book says this, another grammar book says that. So whatever, I'm just gonna go over it. I mean. Mm -hmm. the, the, when I read Old Norse, uh, try to imagine an Anglo-Saxon, you know, in in I don't know, uh, in a, in a Norse area, and he and he reads, I don't know, like a, like I have a, I'm gonna I don't know how to express this. Anyway, Old English is my first old language, so I'm, and so I tend to read things like Old English sometimes. Anyway, so I'm gonna give it a go. So like dur or, or dur, and that's the word for door in Old Norse, whereas the Old English is dur. Mm. So I mean, there is some slight similarity i mean i mean i think after a while people uh, these people might understand each other is this it's just um there would be some misunderstanding no doubt yeah but, but um further but we have to um specify what, what kind of what kind of old english we're talking about i mean i would argue that um despite the um Despite the misunderstandings uh, among these two peoples, that uh, the people that would understand them the most would be uh, the the Northumbrians. Well, well, would yeah. be Ang Anglian Northumbrian, and I have an example here, where the verb to eat is um, uh, the verb to eat in Old Norse is eta, uh, in Old uh, sorry in Anglian or Old uh, Northumbrian Old English it's ata. Yeah, because the thing is, in old Nor in um, old English, uh, Northumbrian Old English, is that the verbs don't end with an n. Whereas, uh, for example, in West Saxon, the verb to eat is eton. Mm. So, okay, so yeah. yeah, yeah. So there is some similarity there, and uh, and why that similarity is there? Well, I mean, the the Angles themselves, in their origins, are Scandinavian. I mean, and there's and there's a lot of uh, uh, well, I mean, this is part of the ling linguistic evidence uh, to prove that uh, that yeah. So that you do have some. Oh, I forgot some other similarities too. Uh, for example, you know, to say I am in Old Norse would be uh, well, I mean, ek em, mm. whereas uh, you can say in uh, Northumbrian is um, ek am. Mm. So it's again quite it's quite similar to that then. Oh yeah, very similar, and uh, uh, it, it's uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's 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 remarkable, and um, I mean, one one reason for that could be it it would depend on the 
because of course it could be that they would be the most similar because of the angles because obviously the angles came from southern denmark that kind of region so yeah. they are likely to have spoken you know a similar language to the people who would later live in denmark mm -hmm. as opposed to say the saxons who then went to uh, found places like Wessex, so in the west country of England. But you could also posit that instead of it being there before, of course, Northumbria, especially the southern part, so around uh, Yorkshire and the, the boroughs, the kind of area of East Anglia, that was the Dane law for the longest time. So that had lots of Danish immigrants moving in, and obviously they would be living cheek by jowl with Saxons, and that's where you still, or Angles rather, um, and that's where you still have lots of dialect words. So a lot of the words in my dialect, for instance, can be traced back to Old Norse because of that contact. Obviously, York, Jorvik was a, um, a long time a Danish and then a Norwegian uh, city, obviously, it was very Scandinavian in nature. Yes. So you yes. could say that the, the Old English similarity in these areas was because of that um, intercommunication between yeah. the two languages. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can see that because there is a word uh, that is like very Norse-like in Old English. It, it's a uh, til, which mm. is where like I guess, um, well, it's like the verb. Uh, sorry, not the verb. Sorry, the preposition to. So like I went to da 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 da. Uh, you do mm. til, like for that too. So um, I mean, that does exist, but then again, at the same time, the word till. In old English, has other meanings too. If you want to say something is good, like good quality, you say it's till. Um, hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm not you sure. still yeah. use that in in like Norwegian. Um, so it's been a while since I've spoken any Norwegian. But it's like um go till huset. I think is that like I'm I'm going to the house or something. I probably butchered that. So I'm apologies if anyone speaks actual Norwegian. But till is used as in to in these languages. Like if you go to somewhere, you use till, yeah. um, and I'm pretty sure you do the same in probably Danish and uh, Swedish because they're basically the same language but with different accents and a few dodgy words. Mm, Sorry to yeah. trigger anyone, but you know they are very yeah. similar. Yeah, they are very similar, but the, but they all uh, evolved a little differently given where they are and whatnot. And uh, mm. yeah, um, what what is well a little um, uh, what's the word? Uh, a little uh, traveling, if you will. Uh, I mean, what what I mean is that you know, so bringing Elfdalian. What's interesting about Elfdalian is that. Um, uh, it's it's yeah it's a it's well some to call it a dialect other others call it a, a language in Sweden but um it has a the like it has a W sound mm. which is really interesting I mean not many people know this but like the W in English is actually a very very old sound it's like the only the only other languages that actually have this sound other Germanic languages that actually have this would be um uh, Flemish uh, West Flemish to be precise and well. Mm. Uh, uh, the some case I would argue uh, maybe in some case in Satterland Frisian, mm. you, yeah, and that, 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 that's remarkable because uh, whereas everyone else in the Germanic world, I mean that, that W yeah. became a V sound, or, or somewhere in between, like in, like in Dutch and uh, West Frisian, it's become sort of in between a W and a V. Like it's it's hard to tell for foreigners when a Dutch person is saying a word with a V or with a W, and they even sound the same, it's V and V. So you, you can hardly tell the difference, especially for foreigners. It's even sometimes tricky for Dutch and Frisian people too. So it's interesting that that has moved because they think that, obviously, the Anglo-Saxons called York um, Aelferwick or Aelferwich. Um, uh, okay. However, then um, the... Uh, the Danes, when they moved in, called it your Vic. And there is some question whether they would have said Vic or your Wick, which then you can really hear Ale for Wick, Ale Wick, your Vic, how that then, you know, moved into the other language, which is really quite interesting. Yeah, that is. I mean, how that, you know, and and they're both like, like meaning like of the like town of the boar, really, because Eovor it, it means boar. You know, hmm. and it's a, it's, I think I think that's an Anglian spelling, where the West Saxon spelling of that would be Ever uh, Ever, and the Old High German would be Eber. So hmm. meaning boar. You know, I mean, very Indo-European guys. Very Indo-European, <laughs> actually. Yeah. 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 So, 
And that's really interesting how that name stayed the mm. same. I, I guess because they think as well that it's interesting because I think um, the kind of Celtic etymology of of it comes from sort of Abraug, which again means something like boar. So you can really, when when you go back in time with these languages, the Germanic ones, you can yeah. see how they are related to the Celtic ones even. So another oh, yeah. example just today I was looking at is the etymology of the word f uh, five. So I think in Old English, is it um, thief, something like that? Like yeah, yeah, that's right, thief, yeah. Thief, well, that's ex pretty much exactly the same as in West Frisian. But mm -hmm. then I think in the Gothic languages in Old Norse, it was something like fimf, so there was an, an M in there. And actually in modern Norwegian, fem is the word for five. But then if you look at the... Um, like Welsh and Old Brythonic, then you have that M in there as well. So I think it was like pimp is the, uh, that's either a Brythonic or Welsh for five. So you can really see if you trace it back that actually all of the, these languages, so Celtic and um, all the various Celtic languages and the Germanic ones actually come from the same roots, which is really interesting. Yeah, it, it is really interesting. It's, yeah, I think what, what, what you're describing there, uh, you know, with the M, and uh, how in old english it's like a uh, fief well not because i think what you're describing is something uh, called the uh, ingvion this is this is a very uh academic thing to talk about it's a it's called the ingvionic nasal uh spirit law what that is so like in comparison to like for, for example let's take the word us you know in old english it's us uh old frisian us mm. old saxon us and but in the other languages, it's like it has this like N nasal, isn't it? yeah, exactly. So like in uh, Gothic uns, Old High German uns, yeah. Middle yeah. Dutch, Modern uns. Dutch uns, yeah. So you can oh, still yeah. hear it back. Yeah, it's really interesting that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because uh, if you go further back, the more further back you go, the more quote unquote English like uh, languages were. I mean, uh, like there was a time where everyone had a th. And it was pronounced like a, 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 a like a initial th uh, like at the start of a word, and it would have been pronounced uh, th, like a like a voice th meaning like a th sound. But then, uh, due due to the high uh, German consonant shift, that th sound became a d sound. Mm -hmm. So so that's why people in Germany say diese. Yeah. The the uh, diese. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. it's interesting. Someone in, in the chat has just said that actually only in the P-Celtic languages, so the ones like Welsh, um, Cornish, Brythonic, um, that they kept the M, whereas in Irish, so the Guadelic languages, so Irish and um, Manx and Scots, Gaelic, that they didn't keep the uh, P and that that was lost just like in English. Wow. That's very interesting, actually. I know someone else was asking if we could talk about sort of the effect on English on the um, various Celtic languages. But from what I'm aware is that it had fairly little impact on it. Now, uh, I may be wrong, but this is what I have understood is that there was fairly little impact of um, English on these Celtic languages because they are in different language groups. Um, if you compare it to, say, the um, various Celtic language groups on each other, and then obviously Old Norse and Old English. Although what did have an impact was Anglo-Saxon expansion. So you have the people, they think they were speaking a language called Common Brythonic before the Anglo-Saxons arrived, but because of the Anglo-Saxon conquests, so after they sort of um, took control of the area of Wessex and Mercia, the Midlands, that it's thanks to this that essentially the speakers of the north, which I recently made a video about, so the Hen Ogled, that they were then cut off from the speakers in living in Wales, so what we now know as Wales, and then that they were all cut off from the Cornish, and that's when they split into their own respective languages and developed separately. Apparently, it was the West Saxons particular, uh, it, like mm. specifically, that, 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 that split up uh, the Celtic languages. Well, they physically split them up, like West yeah. was that area between them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, it's like, oh wow, so it's not the angles, you know, and whatnot. So, um, oh, and, uh, and just to clarify, when I say that English didn't have that much of an effect on it, I'm talking more Old English. So, in the Anglo Saxon period, of course, when um, the British came and, and ruled over that, they had a huge impact on the various Celtic languages when they went because they imposed English and were not really a fan of the, the various Celtic languages where they came. But we well, were speaking kind of Old English, the Anglo Saxon to... period. Be fair, Hilbert. Um, I mean, there are some words in Old English that have some Celtic origins. I mean, there is some in. I mean, it'd be 
it, like the narrative is that you know the Anglosaxons came, they 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 bullied the the Celt and then pushed them all the way back to like Wales and what we know now as uh, Cornwall and all that. But uh, but I would imagine that there would be some trading, there would be some intermingling. Um, uh, and and one of those one of these words that we ha have in Old English that I think is Celtic origin uh, in, in Celtic origin is the word dru, and yeah. uh, dru is uh, I mean I think it means like a well it's the origin of the word druid you know it's it's, 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 it's uh, of that figure of that branch and the word for another, a word for magic in Old English is uh, dru craft mm. so so oh. druids craft yeah what the druid does. Yeah, but like then again, there are other words for magic in old English too. Mm. But like, yeah, so, but that's one of them. So it's um, interesting as well because Northumbria, for those of you who aren't aware, is actually can be broken into two different kingdoms. Um, so the northern one was called Benicia, and the southern one was called Dera. And the interesting thing is that both of these names actually come from old Celtic kingdoms that were there before. So yeah. um, it's, it's thought that Dera possibly comes from an uh, an old celtic kind of etymology of meaning a grove or something to do with oak trees so derry um yeah. in what's now in northern ireland that has a similar root as well as other places and then that the northern kingdom benicia that came from there was thought to be a celtic tribe or a celtic kingdom there um called brinai so it's, it's interesting that they retained those and pretty much every river in the united kingdom has has a Celtic etymology as well. So where I live, the Tyne, that comes from the Tinan, that's Celtic. You have the Avon, um, you have, um, let me think, the Thames as well, the Tamas. So really it's interesting to see where Celtic etymologies, so Brythonic, if we're talking mainland Britain mostly, uh, where they where they remained essentially. So it's it's quite interesting to see what, what they left over in yeah. the form of linguistic heritage and um, toponyms. It goes to show that like it's, it's like asking the question like how Celtic is still England essentially. Mm. You know, I mean I mean I don't think uh, you know, the, well, well given what you just said that proves that, you know, the Celts themselves were not, um, I mean they were not wiped out, and essentially they're like they're still yeah. around today, right? So I mean, uh... especially if you look at DNA, that's what we seem to understand from it. Um, obviously, D DNA is a whole can of worms to open, but it, yes. it, that seems to be the case, um, especially in some areas. And if you do go, you know, across the Pennines into Cumbria, then you know the the people are different, the culture is markedly different, and the accent as well uh, can be can be seen as being different, having a more kind of it's hard to put your finger on it, but a more kind of Welsh twinge to it. And I think that definitely comes from, you know, they were speaking Cumbric there and the Cumbrian dialect, which had Celtic and bits of Norse in there as well. So it's very interesting. Really? Mm. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, like, uh, like I, I knew Cumbric was a Celtic language, but I'm mm. surprised to yeah. hear, hear that it has some old Norse in that. It's even been proposed, I'm not sure how accurate this is, that William Wallace would have been, he wouldn't have been speaking Gaelic because he was in, I think he was in Galloway around in the, around that area uh, in the southwest of Scotland. And it's been proposed that possibly his first language was Brythonic because he was living in the area that had been Strathclyde. So that would be an interesting one. Mm, wow. It's, uh, Wow, that's a, that's, a, that's a lot to take in. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. anyway, to move back into our kind of went on a bit of a Celtic detail, but you know, I've made I've made videos about the Celts before, and you've compared stuff with that before, haven't you as well, Kevin? I think yeah, on your yeah, channel. yeah, yeah. I believe I did a a video in the early days of my channel comparing mm. old English and old uh, no no sorry and old English and uh, Scot Scot uh, Scottish Gaelic. Oh um, yeah, that was a long time ago. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I forget what I've even said in that. <laughs> unfortunately, um, but it's interesting if you like read the sagas. So, for instance, in like um, so we're talking Icelandic sagas, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. interesting that in in Egil's saga, he travels all around Europe. There's even a scene where he's in um, Frisia and he has to. I think, what is he doing? And he has to jump over a boat or something. There's some story there. But Egil's saga, if, if you want a saga to read, an Icelandic saga, then Egil is your man. So that's 10th century that that is set. Although I think it was written in the um, 13th century, if I'm not mistaken. But it describes him uh, being in London and trading. And there's no mention of any kind of linguistic difficulty of him not being able to understand the English. And I don't think that there's anywhere written really that people had difficulty understanding each other. So the other day, Kevin, we were talking about um, 
the yeah. Battle of Malden, and there's this Anglo-Saxon poem about that. And there's quite a lot of evidence. Obviously, the um, Britnoth, who was the commander of the um, of the Anglo-Saxon forces there in this battle in in the 10th century already, um, and he actively talks to the Norsemen and declines their offer of surrender. You know, saying you can come and get it you, uh, by going through our I think he says the Sea of Spears, and even that sounds quite old Norse. That's like a kenning that you would probably hear, like the the uh, the Spear Sea. So I think that does indicate oh, that yeah. if it's That's... true and not just poetic license, that you know there is some kind of understanding between them there that they'd be able to communicate, and as well that he was um, referring to himself as uh, Aeor, which is very similar to sort of the um, old Norse Jarl, so this kind of commander, whereas he was actually an elderman. So. Is there much reason for him to, um, you know, give his status as being wrong, which wasn't really done? Or was he saying that because he was trying to make it more so that the uh, opposing army, I think it was a, I think it was led by one of the uh, Olaf Tryggvason at the time. So I think he was a Norwegian, so probably a Danish Norwegian army. So was he, you know, changing his language just a little bit for the old English word that sounded like the old Norse word? That's very likely because, because mm. I mean, in that, when you're, when you're in a position like that, I mean, you, you, you don't want to be misunderstood. Yeah. You, know, you, 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 you would want, especially when you're dealing with um, potential yeah, people that can't kill you. <laughs> you, know, you want people to uh, understand you. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, I would imagine that, that there would be a time, and especially around Northern England, that, that would, there would have been a Creole, like an Old Englishy. Um, but then again, it, uh, Old English, Norse sort of language, mm. but at the same time, it's hard to differentiate sometimes with like what is it, what is an Anglo word and what is a Norse word. But they're they're yeah. just so similar. I mean, I uh, they even call it like Anglo Danish at one point, don't they? Because you kind of get this mixed language, as you were saying, in in kind of the Dane law area. Yeah, yeah, and and that evolved into you know the dialects that we know today. I mean, in Yorkshire, where my family's from, I mean, uh, and if you want to earn some money, you say uh, you addle some brass. Yeah, yeah, so. Uh, and yeah, uh, it's like the old Norse words that made their way into English quite a lot of the time were to do with trading or with um, laws and things. So we already discussed law. And then you've got adl in um, dialect and things like that. And um, yeah. I'm trying to think of some other words that you know came in um, from old Norse. And it's, it's very specific, the area. So I think it might have more been that general vocabulary, as people have said, that that was quite easily understood between the two. But then it, when you got onto a really specific topic and well, what were the Danes doing? Well, they were trading with people and yeah. they had to rule over the English in those areas. So that's why you get Danish um, Old Norse words from so from East Norse coming into Old English and then through to Modern English about yeah. trading and about things like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, it's fascinating how, you know, uh, the words are still with us today. Mm. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's the beauty of knowing these languages and whatnot. And, uh, you know, so I mean, for those of you listening, I mean, it's I highly recommend actually learning these languages. So, when it comes to reading the sources themselves, you can get a better understanding of the period, because uh, uh, translations, I mean, they're just someone's opinion, and mm. a lot and a lot of translations, unfortunately, they're done in a very poetic way, so it's not literal. Mm. So, so um. Yeah. It's a lot easier to yeah if you can if you can learn the language and then look at the source because there are words that you know yeah. that have one meaning then and mean something else today but oh, also yeah. sort of how yeah. they viewed the words and were they trying to be poetic were they using a, a, a metaphor like the, you know the Valoran so like the yeah. the whale road and things like that um, yeah. or yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. interesting yeah yeah it, it is I give you an example um, the word knight as in like as we know today as a guy and a horse. Yeah. Uh, a thousand, uh, fifteen hundred years ago, uh, that word was well. I mean, depending on the dialect, it could be knicht or it could be knacht. Um and uh, this uh, back then that meant boy, servant, and whatnot. But what was a a knight as we know today? Back then, well, back then it was a reader, uh, meaning literally writer. So, therefore. I mean, because back then it wasn't loyalty to a country; it was loyalty to a lord, a halavord, you know, or um, or or um, and the word halavord, uh, the beginning part halav means loaf, so like bread giver. So I mean, there's uh, it's very deep and all that. So um, 
Um, what else? Um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, dear. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, it goes to show that li uh, words uh, change their meaning over time. And uh, mm. uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, it's probably a, a good time to like move on to another aspect, of course, which is that um, obviously Norse had an impact on English, but yes. the other big wave of, um, well, fairly large wave of immigration, which then caused a, a big shift of, of old English into Middle English is, of course, the introduction of Norman French by the Normans, um, oh, already, the Normans, you know, in some certain ways before 1066. And then, of course, afterwards, when they became the rulers. Um, so what kind of uh, words in English, in modern English, do we have to thank the Normans for? A lot. A yeah. lot of, uh, I mean, there, there, people say that English is like a, a broken form of French, you know, like words like uh, marriage, uh, it's French from um, old, um, no, so from um, Middle English, mariage, uh, yeah, then you have like uh, courage, courage, Mm -hmm. You know, and it's uh, it's it's pretty interesting. But the thing is, that the more interesting thing is that um, that there are a lot of words in English that we think are quintessentially English, but they're actually French. Like uh, words like um, uh, jump. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's a French word. It's not it's not Germanic. Yeah. Uh, Whereas uh, leap is is an old English word. So it's yeah, like uh, leap in French. Helap, and that's yeah, to leap in old English. It also means to dance too in old mm. English. So that would suggest that maybe like that kind of dancing was like kind of like acrobatic or something like that. Who knows? Um, yeah. But yeah, that's oh, no, actually helapen. That's the cognate to German laufen. Mm. Yeah, like to walk. So okay. Yeah. That's, and then you yeah. also have obviously uh, Dutch lopen. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, very very interesting. Um. Yeah, there's a lot of words that that are very like 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 the word attack mm. is, is a French word. Yeah, that's not a Germanic word. It's from the Normans. Uh, like I figured out the other day that the um the word alarm, so mm. that 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 actually probably come is French as well in English because it's like al arm so it's like you know two yeah. arms kind of thing. But then it's yeah, obviously yeah, exactly you're right. Together. Yeah. It's quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, it, it's 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 very uh, uh, yeah, that's that's very French like. Hmm. Um, yeah, there are a lot of words that, I mean, what, the thing is, what happened uh, to the Anglo-Saxons when, when hmm. the Normans conquered England? I mean, they became the peasant class. Hmm. And uh, so on the, and so, when the, so when the Norman lords were eating one night, they, they ate beef, whereas the Anglo-Saxon peasants ate cow. You know, beef is yeah. a French word, whereas cow is a Germanic word. Hmm. So, I mean, uh, same with venison, a French word, deer, the Germanic word. Yeah. And, and also, like when yeah. the Norman lords would go hunting, because they were the aristocratic class who were moved in by William the Bastard, and so they would go hunting in the forest, whereas the Anglo-Saxons would go and cut, you know, um, trees down in the wood, which is you yeah. know the Germanic. So that's why you have quite a lot of the time, the colloquial that was spoken by the labourers, by you know the serfs, the peasant class would be more Germanic. So the old um english origin and i think it's it's something like it's a really high percentage of just everyday english comes from old english but it's the specific high end kind of more aristocratic more what a posh person would say usually that comes from um you know the the norman french as opposed to the germanic yeah that's right yeah and uh, you have a uh someone in the chat saying that uh, pork is french as opposed to pig uh, mm. Poultry is also French instead of eating chicken. Yes, that's also true. Yeah, mm. yeah. but you have so absolutely tons of examples where there's one word which is slightly more high end or specific, which is kind of the, from the French, and then the other which is more Germanic and more from the Old English, which is really interesting. You know, it, it's it's funny how like we have these two words for the same thing, but like it, like but the Germanic sounds more like brash, more like to the point, whereas the mm. Or the the French origin word is more um, uh, more I don't know more polite you know in a weird way yeah uh, yeah it's weird how like we can do that now with English it's not like well people stereotype German as a, as a very harsh language it's very straight to the point well whereas English we can choose to be whether straight to the point yeah. or 
polite, you know, using words of different or, of different origin. It's it's, it's interesting because you you yeah. you have obviously the the Dutch. Um, you were never really conquered by the Normans in this period. You know, there were, that that didn't really happen. But French was for a long time the lingua franca, and lingua franca, francia, um, <laughs> lingua. <laughs> let's try that again. <laughs> lingua franca obviously is Latin for the the French language, and that's come to mean like a you know the the useful language for communication. So the aristoc aristocratic classes would be a lot of the time speaking French. So you yeah. do get words in Dutch that come from there. So for example, an umbrella in Dutch is in uh, parapluie. Um, parapluie. Uh, parapluie is the French. And then you also get words like um, whereas my dad would always call it a clocky, which is a small clock. So for a watch, um, you, you know the proper term for that, and the, the higher end is an horloge which is the same thing and that obviously then comes from french as well yeah 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 that's that's really yeah, that's really interesting i mean i didn't know that about about dutch i mean yeah yeah wow okay that's really cool um but yeah just going this comparison more i mean even today you know as far as like the norman influence as opposed to uh other places in the world um in the uk you say uh, you know i wait uh, you know in the queue mm. queue is as a french word Whereas in North America, you say, I'm waiting in the line. Line is a uh, Germanic word. Isn't that just because North Americans never learn how to queue? It's a very <laughs> British thing. <laughs> no, 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 because it goes to show that, you know, British are still normalized. You know? <laughs> just polite, you know, just polite. Right, right, right. Yeah, but, uh, um, yeah, this, well, just for, for sake of, I'm going to quickly look it up, the word line give its origins um because yeah, it is a dramatic word because i think in german you have like a cognate like lena or something like that or yeah. they, that, could, they, could, they could that could actually be the old english word. yeah because the word line itself comes from old english i think lena i mean i would have mm -hmm. to i mean why is wiktionary not working um uh, uh, old english yeah old english yeah it means um yeah lena it means um uh line uh rope Mm. Yeah. So, and if you think about a line, it's like you know, it's like a string. It's like a string of people, a string of yeah, you know. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that, there's that. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, what else could we say about? I mean, the Normans and how they influenced. Uh, I mean, there, there are probably numerous and and a vast amount of other words that uh, that have that, that are in English of uh, Norse, uh, sorry, not Norse, uh, Norman origin. I mean, mm. they're there. It is interesting, though, because not all of the words that we tend to think would be Norman in English are actually Norman. So, yeah. um, because obviously Norman, um, when I'm saying Norman, I mean French, but then they were speaking uh, Norman French, and that was already different to uh, sort of standard French today or even French of the rest of France, because Normandy was... Um, a duchy for a long time so it had a duke and then these dukes would go right back down to 911 AD which was with Rollo um, Rolf the Ganger, so w Rolf the Walker um, who was, uh, I believe he was Norwegian or Danish so he was you know, of what we would call Viking stock um, but soon they became more sort of um, Frenchified um, and they started speaking French as opposed to Old Norse and they converted to Christendom. Um, but you still had some kind of joint aspect of having that past from Scandinavia. But um, really, there are some words in, in Old English that came into Old English through Latin as well. Um, and then we still have those in modern English. So, and yeah. that was because of the conversion. Obviously, people converted to Partly. Christianity yeah. and the Saxons, and then you yeah. get these words yeah. in from there. Yeah, uh, and, uh, well, um, a good example would be the word uh, strat in Old English, mm. which evolved into the word we know now as street, and it's from Latin. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah, there are a lot of words in Old English, there are a number of words in Old English. That actually, the um, the suffix uh, ere, -E, as in like, mm. let's say, um, we take the verb, uh, I don't know, uh, the verb to, to learn, lernion, take away the i. I A N and replace it with E R E, that that'll be learner. So that yeah. that E R that E R E in Old English that's actually from Latin, that suffix. Yeah. Yeah. So like a lot of things that we think are e even quintessential uh, Germanic are actually Latin. So mm. yeah. So 
No, ni- just for the chat, 911 AD is the year when the uh, Duchy of Normandy was created and it was given to, I think he was Danish, um, to look after the mouth of the Seine River, which is the river that essentially goes through Paris, which is then um, what they used in, in, for example, I think it was 845 AD with potentially the person who we now think is Ragnar Lothbrok going down the Seine to attack Paris. So essentially what the Franks did at this stage was they were getting really tired of having their capital attacked. So they essentially gave this plot of land, this area, um, this duchy around the mouth of that river to the Danes to look after. So to essentially to fight other Danes for it. But that was in 911 AD. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, thank you for the context. Uh, you mentioned Danes, right? I mean, I just want to give some uh, comparison to... Um, to like old English and uh, and uh, well, yeah, old English and Danish. Mm-hmm. Just one word. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so the word for rain in uh, what's it called? Um, and Danish is forgive forgive my pronunciation, but something like rain, something like that. And uh, whereas in old English you have uh, rain, so it's like very mm-hmm. like, and they're spelled the same way. Yeah, they're spelled the same way. So I mean, is it uh, R E I N? And so our our ash G N. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 and then G with the what's it called? Well, the yeah dot. I mean, I mean, it's optional, but yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that goes to show that. I mean, I'm just thinking now. I mean, because uh, the angles. Um, just to go back to our first discussion, just I just I forgot to mention it. I mean, uh, um. Uh, that you know, th- there is a text, a, a Danish text. What's well, in Latin, but like it's it's called the Gesta Danorum, mm. and it's and it says it says there that the, you know the progenitor of all the Angles was a guy named Angol, mm. and uh, and his brother Dan, and Dan was the progenitor of all mm. the Danes apparently. Um, you know that with that source, you know that would indicate that you know the Angles uh, before they came to England were were, were Scandinavian to begin with. Mm. Um, but I mean, this is just that one source, but, uh, but yeah, but I mean, that's something to think about. And just thinking now with the linguistic, um, uh, linguistic, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, similarities between, uh, Scandinavian languages and, uh, and, uh, you know, and, uh, the North, uh, Anglian dogs of old English. Well, yeah, for, I forgot to mention too. Um, it's in, in the Anglo uh, in the Anglian dialects of Old English, uh, what makes it Scandinavian like is the fact that you have words like like the am, the are, like uh, we are, we are on, we are on. Um, the, 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 these are unique to uh, the Anglian dialects. Yeah, you have art in uh, West Saxon, but that's an Anglianism. Because mm-hmm. thing is, with King Alfred, he had um, Anglian uh, scribes, like he had Anglian assistants. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so what, what comes with that too is that, it, uh, with little Angli, Anglian isms in the uh, in the you know the West Saxon poems and whatnot. So I mean the, yeah, and uh, you look at some of these words. Hey, that that's very yeah, like almost Scandinavian like, mm. and um, and it's important to note that what we speak now is a descendant of East Midland di- uh, dialect of uh, of um. What, what, uh, East Midland dialect of um, Old English, yeah, um, which evolved into what we know, uh, speak now. Um, you know, for example, the word elf. You know, uh, there are you know, in, there's another variant of like alf. You know, I think that's a West Saxon approach. Uh, like alf, where it's ash, or it could have evolved in a way where uh, it could have been alf, as an alf. You know, mm-hmm. uh, so I mean, who knows? I mean, uh, I mean that could have been around too, but. Um, yeah, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Oh no, that's fine. I was just thinking, are you? Um, we could take some questions from the chat that are related to this topic. If people yeah. have questions and things. Okay, let's have a Q and A because uh, my brain is a little. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. All right, Q and A, boys and girls. Okay. Okay. Uh, Teach kids safe sex. Yeah, always be Facts, careful with your yeah. knives, kids. Yeah, Facts, yeah, you gotta watch it with your knives. Yeah. How Latin is French? Uh, well, it's uh, the well, thing is, let's let's try to keep the questions 
uh, pertinent to the uh, um, pertinent to the to the live stream because uh, last time we did this, we had people asking all sorts of questions uh, linguistically, historically, and like we were burnt out at the end. And uh... who is the other guy? Oh, okay, so this is my <laughs> friend Kevin, uh, and he runs a YouTube channel. Well, he runs several YouTube channels. Uh, the main one, and the reason I know him is from Lernende Ald English, which is learning old English. So the language of the Anglo-Saxons, but he's got a few other ones as well yeah. about learning old Germanic languages. Yeah, and the third one about modern Germanic dialects mm. and whatnot. So I'm a language guy, essentially. Okay, so someone's asking how to learn old English. Do you want to answer that, Kevin? Because you well, seem like the right person. Well, uh, to learn old English is yeah. what, uh, is how you treat learning a modern language. Uh, well, to a degree. To a degree, I would re highly recommend uh, grabbing a, gra a, a grammar book, and because mm. uh, uh, like if you don't have a grammar book, it would be very hard to learn without one, and uh, it tells you like how the language works and whatnot. Because thing is, old English, th the best attitude to, to approach old English would be to pretend you don't know what it is at all, or pretend to think has no relation to modern English, and then like you got to really restart from scratch because it is a different language altogether the structure of it uh how we use uh nouns and stuff like that and prepositions and things like that it's very very different you, you, you kind of have to uh go with it with uh, go at it with a uh, clean slate if, if you will treat it like it's chinese that you have no idea what it is and then go into it but of course you will be helped by the fact that you know english because yeah. you'll recognize certain things yeah um yeah, exactly. Uh, so, in a nutshell, get yourself a grammar book. Uh, I have another question here. How to pronounce Old English and why is it so difficult to pronounce? Uh, well, the thing is, pronunciation of Old English is kind of sort of open-ended because uh, it's a, it, we have to remind ourselves it is a historical language, meaning that it has a, a starting period, has a middle period, and a later period because the language evolved, right? So, I mean... You can say, like, for example, the word Eng Eng uh, English itself, you can say Englisk, because at one point it was like that. Mm. So, I mean, it's... And still in Frisian, to say English, you say Engelsk. So some of the languages, so in Frisian, you still have the K at the end. So Frisian in Frisian is Frisk. So you still sometimes have that in some languages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, next question here. Uh, Hel Hilbert, I think we... Will... Hang on. Let's have a look. Uh, there's oh, so many questions. This is quite an interesting one, actually. How do we know that Ben comes from Old Norse when there was an Old English cognate of Ben or Ban? Well, to put it simply, we don't, which is what makes it very interesting. So that there's um, quite a lot of discussion about So Ben in my dialect as well means child. Um, and of course, in if you know Norwegian and probably Danish and Swedish as well, then the word for child is also Ben, uh, or no, it's Barn. Sorry. Um, so the I think the Barnahage is is the the um, kindergarten or something. But then in Frisian, so if, which is more like Old English than Old Norse, um, the Ben are also the kids. So you know where do you go from there so we don't really know if it came from one or the other um but it's a good question it's very interesting to try and find out how and where and of course well, there's not always one answer sometimes it would be that it was in old english as ben the rest of england stopped actually, using well, ben as child but then the, because uh, of connected you know the different connections with the danes and things it yes. kept being used well the uh, thing is i'm looking at it now and uh, the word for um it's actually barn uh in old english and yes there is a variant in middle english of bern uh and i guess uh then in old and then scotch scots is a bern mm. uh but in old norse it's barn uh mm. and uh yeah so i mean and I, and, and all this goes back to um proto-germanic uh, uh forgive my pronunciation right um barna so mm. yeah so i mean i hope that answers your question there but yeah oh good question um, yeah, it is. It is. Um, the other questions. Here's a question I have for you. Would you guys be interested to see a video about my dialect, about Northumbrian, perhaps? Seeing as though we've just been talking about it and the various connection with of it to certain old languages and, you know, why it's the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, there's actually a Facebook page uh, out there called... Uh, let me look, mm. look for it so I can give this yeah. guy a shout-out. 
if you if you're on Facebook and you're interested, there is a page for learning about it um, called the Northumbrian language. If you are interested, okay, yeah, yeah. people seem interested, so I'll get around to doing that. All okay. right, thanks very much, guys. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Are there any more questions around? Yeah, there, there, there's some that we kind of overlooked. There's a lot. Out there. <laughs> um, good butter and good cheese is good English and good Frisian. The sense uh, is both correct in English and Frisian. Um, hang, hang on. Yeah. Um, it's there's a question here. It says my OE textbook doesn't cover vowel pronunciation very well. Uh, can you model the EO like uh, in words like "ew"? I, I, I'm not too sure what you mean by model. Uh, well, you can say "ew," uh, like "a ew ew." Yeah, so that's like for those who don't know, "ew" is like the plural uh, dative to say uh, or yeah, or the accusative to say "you" like. Uh, uh, if I say I, I don't know, I send you, uh, and you is actually a group of people, I would use ale and not um, not sec or uh, uh, thech or, uh, or 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 they, because they evolves into the, and that's a for one person. Whereas uh, ale, uh, I think evolved into yao, and then into yo. So, yeah, I think. Um, there, there was yeah, there, a good question the, for you, Kevin, um, which was someone was asking, where can I find an old English or an Anglo-Saxon grammar book? Uh, archive.org. We can get a free one. But however, I have to warn you, though, uh, these things are not easy to read. I mean, if you want a free one, actually, uh, <laughs> that is, yeah, they're not easy to read. However, they'll forge you into a linguistic uh, Beowulf. Um mm. So if, if you want a challenge, um, um, and uh, if you want to be, but it, so if you pick up a grammar from archive.org, type in Anglo-Saxon grammar or primer or reader, you'll find uh, uh, you, you'll find one. But however, if I were to recommend a book for someone who's an absolute beginner, um, uh, you can buy um, one by Peter Baker called uh, an old English. Hang on, let, let me one second. Let me grab it. Um, it's called, um, yeah, Peter S. Baker, Introduction to Old English, 3rd Edition. Uh, you can pick that up. I mean, if you're an absolute beginner um, in uh, Old English, and uh, if you want like a, like a smooth way to get into it, go for it. Um, but if you want a challenge, uh, you can pick up a free uh, PDF book from uh, archive.org. Yeah, so... There was another good question, actually, which um, which I saw, and I'm trying to answer as many as I can here. But um, someone asked from how does the Anglo-Saxon word for uh, yes, which is G-E-S-E, -E, uh, how does yes come from there? And well, really, the reason is that um, even though it's written with a G, um, that's what I, was, what I was saying to Kevin earlier, was that often you write the G with a dot on top and that you don't actually pronounce the G like a G, that it's a Y sound. So it wouldn't, it, that while it's written as like, you might pronounce it geese or something, you would, you would actually pronounce it Yeza. Yeah. Yeah. Cause thing is what, what that is, um, what, what is Hobart is describing, mm -hmm. it's called palatalization. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, so, so the G became a, uh, uh, like a like an English yes sound, or it could be like a like a like a like a j sound, as in like angel. And then we have this in old English, like angel. So uh, that's another uh, example of palatalization. Um, another example of palatalization is the name uh, of the hero. Uh, from, I think from Norse texts or what have you called. Um, well, in uh, Old Norse, the, the name is Ingald. But in old English is ingeld, um, or some would pronounce as ingeld, or and um, but the yelled part—that's where it gets interesting. The um, the yelled part uh, in uh, in what's it called in Old High German is uh, yelt, and that evolved into gelt, and gelt means money, you know, and because because and and ye the yelled in Old English evolved into yield, mm. you know, so like where yield, you know, like. Yeah, you know, Dane yelled or Dane yelled, 
is, is yeah so yeah, it's, it's interesting though because you can you can still like see that distinction between various languages so like um w would you say kevin that they would have pronounced it dean yelled rather than dean geld oh yeah most likely because uh in old mm. english and old Sa uh the old saxon old uh more so old saxon uh, no, 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 sorry more so old english and old um uh Frisian you had palatalization yeah. Still do in Frisian because obviously um, from the same root, the word for money is yilt, but then in Dutch it's geld. So the Dutch hasn't palatized the G, but um, obviously the Frisian has done. Yeah, because uh, the, the thing is with Dutch in particular, and that, 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 that initial G, that, that's a, a relic of Proto-Germanic. Because uh, the further back you go, the more guttural languages were. Like uh, There was a time where, um, if you want to say like, the GE of, of like whatever we, we go sound. So, and uh, if you go f really further back, I mean, as far as the G at the end of a word, it could be uh, like uh, ish sound like. So, if I want to say good day in old English, and like, in, I think in its earliest pronunciation, um, it would be something like hmm. So, like, that's not even close to what we sound like today. So, like, it's so because the language evolves, right? So, I mean, it, it's a. Uh, yeah mm -hmm. um anyway all so, right are there any more questions you'd like us to answer yeah there's actually a number of them, a num oh, number of them. Sure. <laughs> yeah I mean, i'm looking through here and you know want to get through some of them uh, how, how are we doing for time uh Hilbert? Um, I'm, I'm thinking we could still do another 10 15 minutes maybe if you're happy doing that okay uh someone asked an easy question is ale cognate to german euch yes uh, did Thu and Ao emerge from to form y you, or did Ao develop a wise son and then took overtook Thu? Um, the word Thu, or Thu, if you will, evolved into Thou, Middle English, and into Thou, uh, mo uh, early Modern English. Mm. Uh, the word Thou, uh, the story of that, uh, if I remember correctly, um, it it sort of died out. Uh, in later history, like beyond Anglo-Saxon uh, England, because uh, it had like a negative connotation to it. Uh, like I remember, if you look up the history, there's a trial, and it says like, like the accused was like thou, uh, so, like people were essentially accused thou da 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 da. So they had like a negative connotation. Hence, more more people use the um, the uh, the plural, you know, to kind of get away from that. Instead, you use the plural for the singular. Is, That's quite uh, interesting. I actually yeah. made a video about like thou, um, yeah, thy yeah. and thine back in yeah. the day, like over yeah. a year ago now. If you're interested in that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is there any other? Okay, there's a okay. There's a question for you, Hilbert. Here, oh, well, right. it's, it's regarding. Okay, it's actually not relevant to the. It's more about <laughs> video making. Sorry, I apologize for that. Um, oh, okay. Why well, was uh, England not called after the Saxons instead of the Anglo uh, sit instead of the Anglo tribal thing is the the demographics of the time. Um, majority of the people that were in England were Angles, and uh, it was smart of Alfred the Great to be like, okay, our language is called English. All right, it's not Saxious or or what have you, because I guess he would say that because uh, he wouldn't want to piss off his, his the people that have been helping him um, write down uh, the, the uh, Latin uh, translating Latin text and whatnot. I mean. So, um, Andy had to persuade the Mercians and the Northumbrians, who the Northumbrians didn't want to become a part of unified England. They were very happy under the Danes because they were getting all the trading goodies from Denmark. So, actually, the Northumbrians actively fought against the men of Wessex and Mercia when they came up in the 10th century. So, um, after Alfred, so it would have been uh, possibly Edward and definitely Athelstan. They actually fought against them. Um, so, you know, Alfred was trying to really appease the, the Angles. Um, because obviously he was descended from the Saxons, being from Wessex, so the West Saxons. So that's probably why the language is called English, and the place was called Anglaland, the land of the Angles. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Next question. Uh, there's a few here. Asking any more Old North videos? Um, I will probably cover stuff about the Old North when I cover sort of Anglo-Saxon stuff. Although now I've made my like main video about the Old North. But I will probably cover some more of the like Celtic peoples in Britain at some stage in the future. 
Okay, here's a question for me. Uh, could you make a video on the Kentish dialect? Um, I don't know whether that's for me or for... Well, I'll, I'll answer since I'm already speaking. Yes, um, well, I do plan in the future to do the, 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 the videos on differentiating the dialects in Old English because to dispel, to dismantle actually the idea that uh, Old English is a monolithic uh, entity when it's not. Uh, it's very diverse. Um, so then the question here, how how diff how is it different from standard English? Okay, well, Old English is, um, imagine Dutch, imagine Icelandic and German smacked together, and Danish smacked together. That's Old English. Um, the, the biggest difference is, I would say, that is that uh, the uh, Old English has the inflected case system, just like uh, modern German does. So, and um, uh, what can I say? I mean, it, 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 it's, it's, uh, you, you, you're going to have to treat it like a whole different language. You know what I mean? Like the, it's very naive to think, oh, I'm going to get into old English because uh, I know, I know English already, so it must be easy. No, no, it's, it doesn't work like that. It's all, I mean, it's really, really, uh, different. Um, how did the Anglo-Saxons and Danes communicate with the language barrier? I mean, like, you know, you, you don't hear about translators of this period, do we, Hilbert? Um, <laughs> no. Not between the Old English and the Old Norse. So no, that's you know, one of the reasons I'd think that, you know, they'd be fairly mutually intelligible. But yeah, with the Franks, you do, I think, have interpreters and things like that. Yeah, because the thing is, what happened, um, yeah, between the uh, Old Norse and Anglo-Saxons, they, they would understand each other after a while. I mean, at, at first, be like, what? What size do? And I'm like, what the, you know, what are you saying? You know, like, I don't understand. Anyway, um, but but what happened in later history, since the Anglo-Saxons were early Christianized, um, you had something called the Anglo-Saxon mission, where you had Anglo-Saxon monks like Boniface and others, uh, Will abroad. Uh, he, these people. Oh, I think. I'm not sure if everyone else can still hear Kevin, but I've I've lost him. Oh no! Hello. Oh, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So basically, yeah, you had people from England like uh, like Boniface and and Willibrord, and they would go to places like Frisia and, and old uh, old Saxony, Northern Germany, um, and you know they would convert uh, evangelicalism. They would try to convert the uh, uh, the people uh, peoples that they encountered. Why? Because they spoke a similar language. Mm. Yeah, so that's why the, the the Franks were like, okay, you Anglo Saxons, since you're already our religion, why don't you convert these people? So, yeah, and because the Frisians and the yeah. Saxons just pretty much killed the Frankish missionaries that were sent their way, and they ended up killing a canny few of the Northumbrian ones as well. Yeah, yeah. Very There's a good question for you here, um, Kevin, which is speaking of the dialects, how different were the regional dialects of Old English, I'm assuming, so Mercian and Northumbrian? Well, uh, well I can tell you about like. I'd say, uh, well, I can tell you in brief that the, what the biggest difference between, uh, well, in West Saxon, uh, you have the IE dithong. That is only in that dialect. Uh, no other dialect has that. Um, Kentish, on the other hand, has a lot of dithongs. Yeah, a lot of uh, like um, dithongs. Whereas, in the Anglian dialects, there are dithongs, but not so much, a little less. Like, for example, to say, um, you know, the word uh, for cattle or the name of the rune, uh, feoch, mm. uh, uh, in Anglian, it's fech. So it's like kind of shortened, uh, if you mm. will. Um, what is, what is yeah. a diphthong, just for people who aren't aware of what that might sound like in practice? Uh, okay, it's like when two vowels are like together. Uh, yeah, it's like, oh, f f f forgive me for not uh, mentioning in brief. Yeah, a diphthong is like two vowels that make a sound. Or, or like they, there were like two of them were like together. Like, for example, um, EA uh, without any accents or anything on the E would be an ah sound, despite it looking like a uh, EA. But then you have others like if you have a uh, macron or I with, a max, uh, I with an accent and then A would be EA. So, um, and that's how a lot of Latin names were, um, were, were, were transcribed into Old English. Like, for example, like, uh, because there, there is no J in Old English, it would be, it would be represented through, um, through I and, yeah. or, 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 
yeah, we represent it through I, so uh, and a B, and a J we pronounce it as a Y sound. So I mean, or G, uh, since the G makes a Y sound as well. But um, but in other dramatic languages, that the the I would be represented through an I. So until later that the J came in. So. Mm. Uh, let's see what other questions that we have here. Uh, boy, where is Kevin from? I'm from uh, Canada. Uh, He's one of our fellows overseas. Yeah, over the uh, across the pond. Yeah, across the pond. I yeah. Let's see. How did the Jutes uh, survive? Uh, how did the Jutes survive? They only had Kent, if I'm right. Uh, what stopped the and Saxons? Possibly the Isle of Wight as well. That's an yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What stopped the Saxons? Well, it's a two-part question here. It's uh, how did the Jutes um uh survive uh, they only had kent if i'm right uh, uh what stopped the saxons from swallowing them up hilbert i think that'll be a question for you uh, kent was actually for a long time the most powerful anglo-saxon kingdom and we have reason to believe that the mm. other anglo-saxon kingdoms actually paid tribute to them um why well they look geographically small but they were most close to the continent and we have reason to believe, and especially from archaeological findings, that they had close ties to the Franks. And obviously the Franks were the big powerhouse. And of course the Jutes as well. I think it was uh, King Athelbert, if I'm not much mistaken, already in the 6th century converted to Christendom. Um, and that gave him a lot of political leverage on the continent. Also, it made him a lot richer because with Christendom, you've got monasteries and essentially monasteries were like these little economic powerhouses that um, you, obviously they made manuscripts and then they trade these manuscripts on and they'd uh, have sheep and wool um, and things like that. So really the conversion to Christendom is very oh. interesting because most Hilbert. people tend to go, yeah, what, what's that? Mean? You're, it sounds like you're breaking up. heard a lot of like staticky like noise. Oh, really? Did any did yeah. anyone miss that? Yeah, uh, I, I, maybe it might be just me, but like, let's just ask on the chat. Um, yeah. Do you hear any like staticky noise from Hilbert, or am I going insane? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Going okay. On? He heard. Okay. Uh, one person heard it. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. Everyone. So it's fine now. It's fine now. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So Grendel isn't after us after all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's fine. Okay, he's good. All right, cool, cool. The Norns um, haven't boycotted our talk yet. <laughs> Try right. to yeah, that's, that's... Uh, Norns. Right. A lot of um, speaking German in the chat as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. Now, I mean... Deutsche Freunden. Wie geht's? Yeah. Good, yeah. All hail the Franks. Uh, Oh, hail the Franks! Oh, jeez, you don't want to say that to us, uh, to a, a modern uh, Deutsch person. Yeah. <laughs> Revenge. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but else? Any questions, by any chance? Yeah, there are. It's just, it's just so, like so many people talking. You know, it's, it's hard to keep touch, it's, yeah. uh, keep track, really. Um, very interesting metaphor. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, me too, Aiden. Reconquest of daughter start when? That's what I'm on about. Right. Uh, one person asked uh, whether we like this. This person asked whether this is a regular thing or not, or like if so. I, I forgot. I, I found it somewhere. Yeah. Um. I would love it to be, but um, we're both quite busy. So I'm not sure if I could commit to like a schedule of live streaming. Like it's hard enough getting the videos out at the moment. Um, yeah, but yeah. we can try and do this more often. I'm I'd definitely be up for it. Yeah, you know, like you know, I mean, it's it, well, I mean, it goes to show that when these things do happen, you know, people cherish it, right? I mean, it's one mm. of those things. If if it, it, another way to look at it, at it is that let's say um, it, this was a regular thing, you know, it, it would lose its charm if you will. If, if it's once in the blue moon, oh, wait, look at that, it's Leonard and, uh, and the history with Hilbert, you know, talking again, you know, yeah. like, well, you know it's like. Like a treat, you know. It's like a yeah. You know? I don't know. Have you have you guys enjoyed the chat? Yeah, yeah. I hope all you guys uh, really found this uh, chat uh, really uh, insightful, uh, productive, mm -hmm. and uh, yes. Okay. Well, all right. So, okay. let us know if you like the like likes of the live stream. All right.
I mean, okay. I'll 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 try and do my best to to do this more often then if people have enjoyed it. Yeah. Um. Someone else was asking. Uh, let me see here. So many questions. When did the Welsh kingdoms convert from Celtic Christianity? Um. It's um. It depends on what you mean by Celtic Christianity, because obviously under the Romans, the people <laughs> then became Christian, um, with certain retentions of paganism, um. But that's generally referred to as British Christianity um, or uh, Brythonic Celtic Christianity. So what the Welsh, so in the kingdoms of uh, Powys and Gwynedd, what they were, were, they were Christian from being converted by the Romans at that time. Then obviously you get the Anglo-Saxons coming in who were pagan. Um, but interestingly enough, the Welsh Britons didn't try to convert the Anglo-Saxons to Christendom. So the Anglo-Saxons, the southern Anglo-Saxons for the most part, so the first kingdom to convert, Kent, they were converted by the Franks um, by Paul Linus's mission as well, if I'm not mistaken. So they were converted to what was known as Roman Christendom, so related to obviously the Pope, um, although all Christianity is really related to the Pope. Um, However, in the north, so Northumbria, although Edwin tried to convert the Northumbrians to the Roman tradition, the successful conversion of the north of Northumbria was done by a man named Oswald, King Oswald, and he brought monks from Ireland and from Iona over, and they were of the Irish Celtic tradition, um, which was, again, a different tradition to the Welsh Christian tradition. So you had like three different things in different types of Christianity, although it's debatable how different these were. Really, it was more... Um, some of the rules that were different. So monks in the Latin tradition have the tonsure, which is the kind of monk hairstyle, whereas Celtic Christians had longer hair at the back, the monks did, um, and then uh, something else on on the uh, the front. They had like a different haircut, so to speak, and you have various other differences as well. But that tended to go out of fashion in Northumbria. You had the Synod of Whitby, which was around, I'm tempted to say, the second half of the seventh century um under king oswy so that was yeah that'll be 650s 660s i think um and that's when in northumbria the official religion was roman christian mm -hmm. and then in the decades after that it started to celtic christianity in the irish sense of the word started to decline throughout the the isles and then later on obviously with um in ireland itself when you had the the various invasions and colonizations it's it, it already really gone out of fashion by that time yeah yeah, yeah. well said <laughs> thanks <laughs> Yeah, man. Wow. You really know this stuff. Like, wow. It impresses me. Um, <laughs> well, it's an interesting period. Is yeah. It? yeah, it's well, it's a passion, man. Um, here's a question. How much of the Old English vocabulary died with the Norman influence or rather adding to the vocabulary? Well, we gotta, we got to bear in mind here. I mean, it's still... Old English did survive. I mean, well, I mean... It, speaking it, largely Old English um, yeah, words from Old English, it, right, and and a lot of it survives through the modern dialects of mm. uh, of, of you know of present English. So I mean, it, it survives. But um, there was a plan. I forgot which uh, king in late, uh, just after the after William, uh, 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 that uh, there was a French king that wanted to stamp out Old English entirely, uh, but that never happened, thankfully. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh... yeah, because the the Norman kings, it's interesting. For um, I think about two hundred years, the language of the kings of England was French, but also Occitan, um, which is a language from the south of France kind of region. So yeah. I think Richard the Lionheart, his first language, and I think it was his mother, Eleanor of Aquitaine, um, they their first language was Occitan as opposed to French, uh, which was its own language and i'm planning to cover that in a video in the future well, well, the language of the troubadours as well yeah a lot of okay this is kind of yeah well things of king richard Lionheart. yeah he wrote he, he he i think he was bilingual in nor in old uh no, northern french and old southern french which is essentially occitan and old uh norman if you will yeah he and, then, and we know this through he wrote a, a song called uh jean nous en prise like yeah so uh, was it, he was in prison wasn't it yeah, I think he was in Austria when he was in prison. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, On the way yeah. back from Crusade, it's one of those stories. Yeah. yeah, he was writing a letter to his sister and saying how he's abandoned and whatnot. He feels how he's so 
tr- well triggered and sad and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, it's a very it's a good song, but it's a sad song. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Evan, do you know much about runes? Because there's been a bit of discussion about runes, kind of the the runic uh, alphabets. Rune. What can I say about runes? Uh, do, do we have the question? Oh, can I read uh, the? Well, some, uh, so, someone's saying I thought that the Futhark came from the Greek alphabet. And then before we had Is Runic from Etruscan. Uh, yeah, I see that. Is Runic yeah. from the Etruscan. Uh, do the Aesir come from the As? Uh, well, the uh, thing is, um, runes are mm. a different mm. subject altogether. They're, di- they're a whole different mm. field, actually, I would argue, because they mm. are in the realm of a script. Whereas, whereas myself, I'm more into language, uh, not like how the letters are, if, if so to speak. It's more like, like my channel and my channel. I say my channels are about the, how to use the languages themselves, not so much what scripts they're written in. I mean, as far like, the, I mean, yes, the, the proto dramatic would have likely used uh, the Elder Futhark, but as far as it's the origins of that i mean i'm not too well versed in that so i can't give a like i, I don't want to attempt to give an answer and it and it ended up being misleading so i, I don't want to mislead anyone because that's not my field so i'm um, sorry for, for, for that it, it so. is um interesting though that yeah. the obviously the vikings are famous for using runes but the anglo-saxons yeah. used them as well up until a point and yeah. the um the, the runes that were used in Scandinavia, the earlier type, were called the Elder Futhark. And then you had, um, now I think it's around 700 that the shift was from the Elder Futhark to the Younger Futhark. But what's interesting is that the Elder Futhark has more letters, so it, it seems to have become simpler rather than more complicated. But the Anglo-Saxons were using a different alphabet, although it was related, it was runes as well. Um, and runes are they are very sort of the straight letters because they could be carved more easily into things rather than the Latin ones which are um, sort of bendier I guess um, yeah. and yeah. the ones that the old English were, were using the Anglo-Saxons as well as various other Germanic peoples on the continent were the Anglo-Frisian um, runic scripts yeah yeah and the reason why it's so like straight looking because like well it's related to the the, the verb we use today uh, to scribble you know, because it because back if you go further back, it means to write, and mm. the, the, how to write things back then was to you know you had to carve it on the, mm. or scribble it onto like wood or stone. Um, you uh, can still see that in if you in Spanish, for example, the infinitive yeah. of to write is escribir, so you can still see that that scribble kind of thing is there, and a yeah, scribe yeah. as well was someone who scribbled. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, I was gonna say. Uh, Oh, God, I lost my train of thought. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's all interrelated, you know, you know, uh, you know, all these words and whatnot. Um, now the question here for me, it's, uh, Kevin, what languages have you studied? Well, I mean, growing up in Canada, uh, I've, I've learned French. Uh, I've learned uh, Old English on my own, um, learned German. And uh, but but when I but I'm also l- looking at other old Germanic languages like Old High German, um, Old Saxon. Uh, yeah, Old Saxon and Old High German are the main ones I've been looking at a lot lately. Um, I have delved into a bit into Old Frisian. I mean, I mean, I've been meaning to make videos about Old Frisian, but I just never got around to doing it. Sorry, sorry, Hilbert. Oh, um, take your time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, as for like, I have looked at Gothic. I mean, Gothic. Oh, geez, that 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 is a very foreign, like, as like out of all the Germanic languages. I mean, I'd say Gothic is the most, uh, well, I don't want to say obscure, but the most different one out of. Oh yeah, it's East Germanic, right? So it's like really different than West Germanic or North Germanic. But anyway, um, yeah, as as far as to answer your question uh, directly, it's. Uh, so just French, well, English, yes. I mean, it's my native tongue, but like as far as like actually studying other languages, uh, French, uh, Old English. Mm-hmm. Yeah, learn Old English first, then German. Yeah, that, that's a usually people learn the other way around. But yeah, but like learning Old English first made German much easier. It mm-hmm. was like, 
wow, this is actually fun to learn now. So, yeah. What other questions do we have? Um, yeah, Gothic is probably um, older than Old English. Yeah, it is. I think they thought that that was one of the first ones to split away from kind of common Germanic in the south of Sweden and uh, the island. Yeah, um, yeah. Gotland, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's why it's different because the longer a, a linguistic group has split off and been separate, the more different it gets. Yeah, it evolves differently. Yeah, mm. the thing is with Gothic, though, mm -hmm. like, the, like the Gothic Bible, I think, was written in something like in the fourth century or something like that. So that's very early. So it has like really um, a lot of like archaic Germanic uh, isms in it. But the cool thing, the good thing about uh, Gothic is that um, despite it being a distinct, uh, no, not dis well, it is distinct, but also extinct language and, and there's no modern descendants, it, it, it provides, uh, it helps uh, it helps a lot when reconstructing um, a proto-Germanic, you know, to see how things would have been pronounced and before that, you know, so uh, um, let's see other uh, questions here. Kevin, do you know much about um, Pennsylvania Dutch by any chance? Uh, well, in name, it's called that, but it's really, uh, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, like a plout in Deutsch or something. I, mm -hmm. I, I would have to look it up. Yeah, because it's the, yeah, it's the Mennonites and the, the Amish yeah. people that, that, that speak it. Um, so, like, w would you think that it, it came more from Platt and Deutsch, so more from, like, the North German rather than more Southern German, which has become, you know, High German, regular German? Let me uh, look this up. Pen, pencil. Okay. Canadian. Anyway, um, gotcha. someone's asking, did the Germans settle in Pennsylvania? Yeah, um, I think Germans were prob possibly the biggest demographic um, ethnically of people who went to the United States, bigger than English, I believe. Yeah, because um, yeah. the, the majority demographic in, uh, in the United States is uh, German. Um, then it's Irish, and then it's English, whereas in Canada, it's, uh, it's English, Scottish, then Irish. If I'm correct, but yeah, it's so not, you not. still have like remnants of that in places. So like in Texas, you still have like people speaking Texas German. Yeah, um, yeah And in yeah. Wisconsin as well, there's loads of Germans went there and uh, yeah. various other states. And I think there was like a quarter of a million Germans fighting in the American Civil War. Most of them for the North, which is quite an interesting demographic as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's. Uh... You know, let's not try to veer off too much from the uh, main topic, right, Hilbert? Because we don't want to yeah, pull what we did good. last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last time we did this, we had people asking anything they wanted, and uh, by the end of it, I mean, our voices were done. I mean, we we're like so, like, uh, not out of breath, but like, like our, our throats were really sore afterwards. Yeah, I, I think I had like um, a week where like I pretty much lost my voice, but it was all yeah. worth it. Yes. Anyway, I think we can answer like three four more questions and then uh, i think it's yeah, a fruitful think, stream yeah, yeah i think that i think that's a good idea so um uh, questions right okay right three or four questions well uh, Amero Gallic. Actually, you know what? Not many people know this, but like the word America itself is actually a Gothic word. You know, newsflash. Because um, the guy who, who discovered America, um, like part of his name is Amerigo. And, but that goes back to the Visigothic um, Americ. And Eric means um, kingdom. You know, like as in English, Riche. Rike, you know, as, as evolved into old, uh, modern English, uh, uh, rich. So, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so okay, that's just me uh, saying that. So, so the question: is How accurate is pro? How accurate is Proto-Germanic reconstruction? Well, I mean, well, I mean, I, 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 I think it's pretty reliable i mean uh depending who you read it from i mean i uh you know i, I you know jo joseph wright's grammar book i mean it has a lot of uh, phonology and uh, like what from proto-germanic uh, evolved into the uh, 
Germanic languages, and you know, I and I fully respect uh, Joseph Wright because Joseph Wright is the guy who wrote like a the dialectal uh, uh, dictionary of England, mm. and he he was the tutor of Tolkien. So I mean, you know, when you have that, uh, you know, I mean, I I, I think Proto Germanic is pretty reliable, and uh, I mean, I mean, I haven't studied it to, uh, in in great detail, but um. I uh, I think um, it, it's something to it, worth knowing because it, it really it really uh, the, the value of knowing it, it helps with understanding uh, uh, old English and o- other Germanic languages because because uh, you know what evolved into what like like to reiterate the ow in Germanic old Proto Germanic evolved into a in old English and o um, so, well sorry e e with the macron a um, in Old English, and then uh, uh, Macron O in Old High German and in uh, Old Saxon. So, uh, yeah. So that's two questions so far, I think. Uh, so, so, uh, so two more actually. So I don't want to. Yeah, I don't. I don't know, who, um, Connor. I'm not too sure about um, Gaulish or like the Gallic language from Gaul. Um, apart from that, it, it did go extinct, and we don't have any sort of languages that continued on after well, um, Gaulish. Well, there there are people out there that are trying to revive it. There are, yeah. We we both know someone who is. Um, yeah. Has he has he already published his book? I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm not um, sure. Yeah. Okay, I'll I'll find out, and if I have time, I'll see if I can make a video. Um, but yeah. I, I'm I'm not too sure about um Gaulish. It was a while ago I did the video as well. But essentially I think all the people moved over to speaking um Latin and then Volga Latin and then that developing yeah. into French. Um the one Celtic language in, in France that there still is is Breton um in Brittany, but then that was re imported from the United Kingdom. So its mo its closest neighbour is Cornish, um both geographically across the sea in England and linguistically, and that's because of the Anglo-Saxon migration and invasion that people fled from England to Brittany. Mm. Do you consider Scots a language or a dialect? Good question. Uh, well, it, I mean... It depends how you classify language and dialect, to be honest. Well, yeah, you see, question. there's a poetic uh, mm-hmm. proverb or saying... Uh, in regards to the difference between a dialect and a language, that a language has a an has an army and a navy. Mm. You know, I mean, you know, like you could argue. Well, I don't, I don't want to piss off any people, but like, uh, you know, like just because, yeah. Well, the thing is, dialect and language is very controversial. Actually, like some people, well, you know, like, for example, Norwegian and Swedish or and Danish. I mean. You know, someone could say, "Well, they're they're like dialects of a, of of a of a single language, um, mm. or or what have you." But then again, that's because thing is, dialect and versus language is is really a political uh, um, question rather than mm. a, ling- a linguistic one. It's often been used as well to sort of like look down upon people who speak dialects um, or yeah. or you know things that are considered languages. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And the thing is with with the the uh, stigma of a dialect, unfortunately, these are negative stereotypes. Oh, like, oh, you people speak that. Oh, they must be stupid, you know. Or, or sure, it's quite often thought, you know, that people who speak with, yeah. and all with, you know, especially in dialect, um, is is that they are looked down upon and for probably being poorer or less educated or something along those lines. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but to be fair though, uh, there are organizations out there who are helping dialects and languages throughout the world that are trying to help preserve what can be preserved and uh you know so it's uh fantastic um all right let's do one more question yeah one more question we have the last one here from uh shadden zero zero uh four zero how important was the doomsday book in uniting england after the norman conquest Ooh, Hilbert, you want to tackle this one but I'm not sure if the book itself united people. Like, I don't think people went to the shop and like bought the pocket <laughs> edition. Um, but 
<laughs> what it did was consolidate Norman control over England, I think, because essentially it was a huge inventory. So it was the um, William sent out, I think it was in the 1090s or, or um, somewhere after the conquest. And he sent out these guys into the countryside to go and write out how many, um, I, think it's, I think it's like ponds, fields, uh, huts there are. So he had essentially an inventory of everything inside his new kingdom. And really when you have this kind of knowledge, it means you know uh, what you should be getting into if people aren't working as hard as they should be you know um then or as well um it really gives you a massive overview so i think it helps them to understand the country that they now ruled over and also when they found out who were the lords in certain areas of course most of these were um, anglo-saxon lords and they replaced huge quantities of old aristocratic families with new Norman families. So that's why posh people tend to have a certain type of name because most of the time they are descended from the Normans. Um, so, you know, in England you have this and in Scotland as well. So uh, Robert Bruce was actually Robert de Bruce, uh, a, a, a Norman, um, especially in Ireland as well. You have that, the people with Fitz in front of their name, that's very Norman. It uh, means son of, so Fitzroy, son of the king. You have uh, Fitzgerald, son of Gerald. Um, and a lot of the time when you look at the lords in both England and Ireland and Scotland and even Wales, the, the names, the etymologies of them are from the Normans. And what the Doomsday Book did was essentially it, it showed the rulers what there was in the country so it gave them great administrative power um really i don't know if you want to add anything else on on the doomsday book yeah yeah um I'll, I'll send, okay i'll take i'll answer for me i'll answer mm. one last question okay one last question and we have one here that says which old English books or online forums recommendations? Online forums, books. Well, um, what can I say? You could go to archive.org. You can get yourself a grammar book. But bear in mind, uh, these the grammar books on, on archive.org are very, uh, uh, very very dense like they're meant with mm. people who have like a degree in linguistics or have a background in latin don't worry don't worry i've d i've gone through it without the background of latin and without the background of having a linguistics degree or what have you um but like once you master those uh you you become really well versed in like not only just old english but linguistics linguistics itself and um but if I recommend an actual physical book they can get for you, you would have to pay for. Um, whereas archive.org is free, you can get um, Peter S. Baker uh, Introduction to Old English, third edition. It's I would recommend it for the absolute beginner, like really, really absolute beginner, like a smooth way to get into old English rather than take the really hard route, which I did. Mm. Um, but as well, I mean. Uh, as, as far as online forums, I mean, you can find old, old English groups on Facebook. Yeah, there are plenty of them out there. And um, and finally, you, you can always learn Old English from uh, my channel. And uh, so, um, yeah, I, like, even though right now I'm more focusing on more uh, music lately. So, um, but yeah, I do have a lot of educational channel, uh, educational content where you can learn from and all that. Okay. So right. one last question from me. Okay. Uh, would people be interested in like uh, I don't know how this would work, but some kind of online group for you know discussing these kind of things and possibly learning these things as well if people find articles and things. Like I have the Facebook page, but I'm not sure if I can get around to creating a group as well at some stage, possibly in the future. Okay, well, I mean, Hilbert, I'd like to say, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure being on your show. It's been, uh, yeah, it's been good thank to have you again, man. It's been really fun. Yeah, thank you for having me. I mean, it really means a lot. I mean, we get along so well, and, uh, you know, and uh, it's um, really, really cool that you've had me on here. Yeah, All right. for coming and um, imparting some of your wisdom onto us normies. It's been fun. <laughs> You're very welcome, Hilbert.
All right. Thanks everyone else for tuning in as well. You know, it's been really good. Thanks for all the cracking questions and all the uh, discussions in the chat. You know, it's uh, been really good. And um, if, you know, Kevin wants to come on again, then we'll try and do this again at some stage. All right. Th thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye right, now. Everyone. Cheers. Take it easy, everyone. Bye-bye. See you later.